Hello, and welcome to our midweek reading, readings, talk and prayers. And we start with the collect for St. Patrick, whose day we mark on the 17th of March. Almighty God, who in your providence chose your servant Patrick to be the apostle of the Irish people, keep alive in us the fire of faith he kindled and strengthen us in our pilgrimage towards the light of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And our first reading is from Isaiah, chapter 49, verses 8 to 15. The Restoration of Israel. This is what the Lord says. In the time of my favour, I will answer you. And in the day of salvation, I will help you. I will keep you and will make you to be a covenant for the people to restore the land and to reassign its desolate inheritances, to say to the captives, come out, and to those in darkness, be free. They will feed beside the roads and find pasture on every barren hill. They will neither hunger nor thirst, nor will the desert heat or the sun beat down on them. He who has compassion on them, will guide them and lead them beside springs of water. I will turn all my mountains into roads and my highways will be raised up. See, they will come from afar, some from the north, some from the west, some from the region of Aswan. Shout for joy, you heavens, rejoice, you earth, burst into song, you mountains, for the Lord comforts his people and will have compassion on his afflicted ones. But Zion said, the Lord has forsaken me. The Lord has forgotten me. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. And our gospel reading comes from John chapter 5, verses 17 to 30. In his defence, Jesus said to them, my father is always at his work to this very day, and I too am working. For this reason, they tried all the more to kill him. Not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was even calling God his own father, making himself equal with God. Jesus gave them this answer. Very truly, I tell you, the son can do nothing by himself. He can do only what he sees his father doing. Because whatever the father does, the son also does. For the father loves the son and shows him all he does. Yes, and he will show him even greater works than these, so that you will be amazed. For just as the father raises the dead and gives them life, even so the son gives life to whom he is pleased to give it. Moreover, the father judges no one, but has entrusted all judgment to the son, that all may honour the son just as they honour the Father. Whoever does not honour the Son does not honour the Father who sent him. Very truly, I tell you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged, but has crossed over from death to life. Very truly, I tell you, a time is coming and has now come when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself. And he has given him authority to judge because he is the Son of Man. Do not be amazed at this, for a time is coming when all who are in their graves will hear his voice and come out. Those who have done what is good will rise to live, and those who have done what is evil will rise to be condemned. By myself, I can do nothing. I judge only as I hear, and my judgment is just, for I seek not to please myself, but him who sent me. Father, may these spoken words be faithful to the written word and lead us to the living word, Jesus Christ our Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen. Our gospel reading sort of starts mid-sentence. Jesus has just healed the lame man at the pool 
the poor chap who could never get down to the water fast enough when the waters were stirred up. And then the authorities used this opportunity to attack him, initially because the healed man was carrying his mat on the Sabbath. Jesus had said to him, take up your mat and walk. And so when the Jewish leaders were looking to reprimand him, he told them that Jesus had told him to do it. The Jewish leaders were already very suspicious of Jesus. They didn't like anything he said or did. And then he responds to their accusation of encouraging others and working himself on the Sabbath by telling them that he is doing his father's work. My father is always at his work and I too am working, he says, putting himself on a level with God. The effect of these words was to make his enemies redouble their efforts to get rid of Jesus. In verses 19 to 24, Jesus talks about the father and the son depicting their relationship as like an apprenticeship, with the father showing the son what to do and how to be, and the son doing as the father does. He makes it clear that when people treat him a certain way, they are treating God that way too. Jesus goes on to talk about judgment, not an easy subject, but one that it is fitting to consider during Lent when we are reflecting upon our faith and our behaviour. The Jews at that time believed that God would come in judgment one day. He would raise the dead, bring evil under scrutiny and put the whole world to rights. Everyone, living and dead, would face the consequences of their bad deeds and share the reward for their righteous deeds. This was part of the motivation of the Pharisees with their desire to obey all the small laws about diet, clothing, washing of hands, etc., they wanted to work their way into heaven so they would be on the right side when judgment came. When Jesus talks of this time of judgment, however, he implies it has already come, that it no longer lies in the future. We know that Jesus came to usher in the kingdom of God, the time when everyone can know God, Jesus and the Holy Spirit, and all will be able to lead good lives and when all the abuses of God's creation are put right. This kingdom is described in our first reading from Isaiah, with freedom for the captive and enough food and water for all. We are told there that he who has compassion on them will guide them and lead them beside springs of water, and that all who are afflicted in any way will be cared for. Because of Jesus' words, we can know that the kingdom isn't some time in the future, although its full outworking is still yet to come, but that we are living in it now and we have our part to play in bringing it to fruition. Because God is outside time, those who have known and loved God in their lifetimes have already been raised from the dead and are resurrected. Jesus says in verse 24, Anyone who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has eternal life and does not come under judgment, but has passed from death to life. That's an amazing statement. It means that we can have total confidence in the promises of eternal life and of having life abundantly that we read in the scriptures. Eternal life is guaranteed for us the moment we decide to follow Jesus and put our faith into practice. We need have no fear of death in this world or of judgment if we live our lives faithfully in relationship with God, repenting of our sins and striving to live as he wants us to live. What do we need to do? It's not as easy as following a list of do's and don'ts, but we have to keep in touch with God, persist in our worship, our prayers, our study of the Bible. We need to use opportunities to share our faith as God directs us. We need to be of service to others where we can. It's not a bad life, it's the life we were designed to lead, but we have to decide to adopt that life. We have free will as human beings, so there has to be that decision to follow Jesus and that act of will to keep on loving him and walking with him. 
in that way, we will play our part in bringing the kingdom fully into being on earth so that justice and fairness will prevail and all will live in peace. The world seems a long way from that happy state right now with a pandemic, war, unrest and refugees fleeing from fighting and persecution and from natural disaster and economic hardship. But we should not get depressed. God made each of us. He put us here in Hadley at St James and St Barnabas and he has a purpose for us individually and as a church. We can model the kingdom life to others, behaving as a family and valuing and respecting each other. We can share God's love by inviting people into our church for all sorts of events, as well as sharing important times in their lives with funerals, weddings and baptisms and our special services. We can use opportunities we have in our personal lives to share God's love in practical ways and by talking to people about Jesus. Let us pray for God's help in this work. Dear Lord, we thank you for bringing us to this place right here and now. We thank you for your promise of eternal life and for your desire to see your world put to rights with everyone living happily now and for eternity. Please show us what our part is in bringing in your kingdom. Guide us and support us as we follow you. Amen. And we come now to our time of prayer. And we start with a prayer of thanksgiving, echoing the Isaiah reading. Lord, on the journey of life, you teach us, sing for joy and rejoice. When we find ourselves lost or lonely, you teach us, sing for joy and rejoice. When we are imprisoned by the walls of routine and stress, you teach us, Sing for joy and rejoice. When we feel you have forgotten us, you teach us, sing for joy and rejoice. You promise to care for us, Lord, and you hold us in the palm of your hand. How can we not sing for joy and rejoice? Amen. We bring to you in prayer our world, the rich and poor, powerful and weak well-fed and hungry, healthy and sick, those who enjoy peace and those who endure war, those who are free and those who fight for justice. All things are yours and we entrust them to your keeping. We bring to you in prayer those who are part of our lives, family and friends, neighbours and colleagues, all whom we meet or speak to in the daily round of life. Take a moment to pray for anyone for whom you have concerns. All things are yours and we entrust them to your keeping. We bring to you in prayer ourselves, weak, faithless, hesitant, foolish. We bring all we are and all we long to be seeking your help and your transforming touch. All things are yours and we entrust ourselves to your keeping. Lord Jesus, we love you because you first loved us. You opened your arms to show us that love. Help us to use our hearts and our hands to show that love to others. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And a blessing. As we look about our world, 
and see and hear and find. May our hearts be filled more and more with a sense of your dynamic and creating presence and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. <laughs>